Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where every week I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. Between last week's post and this week it was my birthday, so I decided to take some typical birthday cake ingredients, add a few ingredients of my own and have some fun with fizzing and burning. Let's check it out. Both demonstrations this week involved using potentially very harmful substances, so do not attempt either of these demonstrations at home without an adult there to help you. What is a birthday without some fizz? Fizzy drinks, fizzy sweets. But after the party's over, we need to make sure and brush our teeth. So for my fizzing this week, I decided I was going to make some elephant toothpaste. To do this, I'm going to start by adding one cup of hydrogen peroxide into an empty plastic bottle. Hydrogen peroxide is a potentially very harmful chemical if you get it on your skin, so you'll notice I'm wearing rubber gloves to protect myself. Once I've poured my hydrogen peroxide into my bottle, I'm going to add a few drops of washing up liquid. Then I'm going to add some food colouring. Once the washing up liquid and the food colouring are added, just give the bottle a wee swirl to mix up everything that is inside. That is all I am adding to my bottle for just now. I'm going to carefully set it to the side while I set up the next step in this process. The next part of the elephant toothpaste process is to add 4 tablespoons of very warm water to a bowl, add a whole packet of dry yeast to that bowl and mix these together. The elephant toothpaste demonstration can be very messy, so now that I've got my bowl of warm water and yeast ready along with my bottle, I'm going to go outside to perform this demonstration. Using the funnel, I'm going to add the mixture of warm water and yeast into the bottle, very quickly remove the funnel and step back and watch what happens. So what actually causes the elephant toothpaste reaction? Well, the yeast that we add to the bottle acts as a catalyst. A catalyst is something which speeds up a reaction. The yeast uses up the oxygen that is contained within the hydrogen peroxide. This produces a lot of gas bubbles and it causes the foam to shoot up out of the top of the bottle. You can use different strengths of hydrogen peroxide. I was using 12% strength hydrogen peroxide, which produces a very strong reaction but you can also use 6% hydrogen peroxide or 3% hydrogen peroxide and still get a good reaction. Another fun part of birthdays is the burning and blowing out of candles. I'm going to do something different with the burning for my birthday episode and I'm going to try and make a carbon fire snake. The first part in the carbon fire snake process is to fill up a bowl with dry sand. Then I'm going to carefully soak the sand with lighter fluid. Now that I've soaked my sand in lighter fluid, I'm going to set this bowl to the side and move on. The next part in the process for making a carbon fire snake is to mix one tablespoon of baking powder with four tablespoons of icing sugar. Now I'm going to carefully add my mixture of baking powder and icing sugar into the middle of my soaked sand. Because this demonstration involves using fire, I'm going to take this one outside as well to show what happens with the carbon fire snake. So I don't get too close to the lighter fluid with the lighter, which would be dangerous, I'm going to set on fire a wooden skewer and use that to set fire to the lighter fluid in my bowl and then let's see what happens. Normally when you burn sugar, 
it uses up oxygen and produces carbon dioxide and water vapour. When you burn baking powder, it produces a lot of carbon dioxide. In this reaction, because the baking powder is burning and producing carbon dioxide, that means there is less oxygen for the sugar to use, so some of the sugar turns into elemental black carbon. The carbon dioxide and water vapour gases that are being given off in this reaction go inside this elemental black carbon and push it up into the air. It does look like it could be really quite sturdy and quite heavy, however it is actually more like a black foam which is easy to break apart and is very light. Well, that's all for this week's birthday episode. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demonstrations that I've done so far. This has been STEM with Mr N, exploring some fizzing and burning.